today we have a special guest. We are joined by my ghost, ghosty here, and uh, Bob, Bob the skeleton here. Anyway, they're gonna be my emotional support as we go through and unpack in this video. I want to show you guys the planners and journals that I have been using. I haven't updated or haven't done like a real update video. I think the last time was three months ago, like the Beetlejuice spread. Since I haven't really gone through like my planner uh, updates in a while, I wanted to share with you guys like what I've been doing. I had been using a uh, Philofax for a, um, like the Philofax Ringbound planner for um, memory logging, which we have right here, and then we have. Uh, this guy here, which is my, um, like this was supposed to be like my just everyday journal type of thing. This is getting super chunky. Um, and this is the, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of words today. So bear with me here. Um, this is the Moleskine Expanded 400. I really like this. I, I like this surprisingly more than I thought I would and I wanted to talk about each journal too like just to kind of give like an overall update and how I've been using obviously I have a lot here I have like a stack of journals this is something I also wanted to address going into 2025 I really want to stay in like maybe like max three books um, this year I definitely experimented a lot although I didn't document the experimental part on my channel I have been using like four to five different kind of journals so it's something I want to cut down on for sure um move our friend for a sec so I have some space so just gonna do a quick like overview update on the journals that I have been using and that I have shown on this channel so this is the Filofax rings and also sorry that the lighting is so dark i don't know what's going on because i have a window like to my left and it's super sunny outside but even if it's sunny it's so dark on my desk and i even have to have like lamps on here and it's still <laughs> dark so i don't get it but whatever moving on okay so i had originally used this as a memory um like a memory logger so meaning just like really small snippets of my everyday I'll show you guys the past ones that we got going so just like these were like very short little snippets um, of like my daily just like highlights and things that happen Unfortunately, I have not been very good at keeping update with this. So my last entry was like in July, I think, or the end of June. And it is now October, which is insane to me. I can't believe it's October. I really can't. But um, anyway, so this is something that I feel like I <laughs> kind of stopped doing. I definitely want to get back into it though because this really helped me with remembering certain important things. I didn't necessarily use it as a reference journal or anything but it was more of like writing it out in short bursts. Um, just kind of helped me remember certain like key events and key highlights because I have very bad short-term memory. So um, this is something that I definitely needed to be more consistent with but sadly to say i haven't and i haven't and i have a theory as to why it was so hard for me to keep consistent and i think it really ultimately is just because i have too many journals and i'll talk about this a little bit more too when um as i go through the video but i do think when you have too many things like the overconsumption of planners and journals i think definitely messes with us in a bad way like you know like mentally um at least it does for me again just speaking for myself sometimes people have multiple planners and it works for them 
Um, this is something I know about myself, yet I still continue to like accumulate new planners and new journals and, and notebooks and paper things because I'm just such a paper addict as a lot of us probably are. Um, but I do... I do know myself and I know that like when I have too many like options, too many things to write in, I kind of start to shut down and stop like writing in any journal because it just gets overwhelming. I feel like it's too much work. So this is one of those things that I do want to keep like continue on into 2025, but I... I'm just going to be honest with myself. I know that it's not going to work with this ring bound planner. It's a beautiful planner. I definitely kind of fell for it like after watching like YouTubers and like with social media and people had switched to ring bound and I hadn't used a ring bound planner for a long time. So I just thought like, yeah, you know, this could work for me too. And unfortunately, like, I just can't make the reading bound planners work. I have tried to make Filofax work for me for the, I don't know, for as long as I've been into journaling and planning um, for, like, probably, like, a decade. Um, I do have other Filofax, like, notebooks that I've used over the years. I think at one point in my life, it actually was a really great um, system for me. Like, when I was still going to... An, an office job I did have a ring bound planner and I felt like when I was in I don't know I don't know why I don't know why but when I was in an office job I felt like the ring bound planners worked better for me and again I cannot tell you guys why like um I mean I'm still working now if not more than ever but like being in office and having like this on my desk it felt easier to write in. I also just felt like it was easier to like have an agenda when you're in office and you have other coworkers like also using planners and you know like the whole vibe <laughs> of being in office made the ring bound planner easier to work with for me I guess. I don't know that's just my theory but um yeah it's definitely as a remote worker I do work fully from home so I do think as a remote worker, the ring bound planner system just doesn't work for me. So in 2025, I will definitely probably be letting this go. I'll probably end up selling this cover as well. It's a beautiful cover. This is the Malden. Um, I don't know if I'll sell it or if I'll just keep hold on to it because it was pretty expensive. But I just, I just think this is like not working for me and... Uh, something that you just have to realize sometimes like you have to admit that like no matter how badly you want to love something because of the aesthetic of it if it doesn't work for you you just have to let go so that's my update on my memory logging all right and then this one this one is the moleskin expanded this is the 400 page one it is a chonkster for sure i honestly wasn't expecting to like this one so much so I bought this one because I saw um, I was influenced by Michelle from Seaweed Kisses she's amazing I've been following her for like 10 years probably <laughs> also um but she had um shown her Moleskin Expanded and I was like you know I kind of want something that's not so precious and I do feel like the Moleskin Expanded is less precious than like a Hobonichi or like a Salogy or any of those like Tomoe River Paper type of notebooks since they tend to be a lot more expensive. I mean, this one was probably like 20 bucks on Amazon and Hobonichi stuff is like, I don't know, like $80 um, with shipping. So I started using this earlier this year and I wasn't really sure that I was going to consistently use it I kind of felt like I would fall off just because I didn't like the paper um I'm like partial to like the yellowy paper I like the white paper um so this these pages are super like yellow um even more yellow than like the Tomoe River paper that's a little bit like eggshell colored it's like a little bit more yet on the yellow side so I didn't really love it but I did kind of love like the vintagey vibe of it I guess and I wanted to use this as like my throwaway journal like just something I could like throw into a bag or like I don't care like I can just like scribble in it and 
do chicken scratch writing and experiment with markers you know all that stuff I, that's kind of like what I went into this like thinking <laughs> but I actually ended up using it a lot more um consistently than I thought I would and then this case this or case this cover is from coach they released this in spring earlier this year I actually have a matching bag that goes with it and it's just so cute it's made out of glove tan leather so it actually feels really nice and I think it'll just like last forever and I've been really liking this little cover um it actually fits an A5 not like in like not totally this is a bad example because it already has a like clear cover but it actually like does house house it so it's like an A5 size, if anyone's curious. And that goes for like all of the coach. Um, well, this one doesn't close, but just to show you guys the dimensions, it does fit. Or I guess a better example would be, this is also an A5. This is from Sterling Inc. But this does house like really nicely in there like that. So if you are interested in the coach covers, um, A5 notebooks do fit. And this one doesn't really fit per se, like it's definitely a little bit too long, but I just use it as a cover because I think it's so beautiful. Okay, anyway, so with this notebook, I definitely did use it pretty consistently, um, but it's one of those notebooks where I, like journals, where I feel like I can just have a lot of creative freedom with. So this isn't something where I feel like the pages need to look really prim or proper or clean um it's just more just like freehand um some of the pages are definitely more designed than others some of them I definitely put a lot more thought into than others but for the most part it's just kind of like a catch-all journal like that um I can just have fun with and not worry too much if it looks like amazing or not um, but I did really end up putting a lot more thought into this than I, than I initially thought I would. And the nice thing about this journal is that this is the only journal that I have that I'm using that I've actually started from the beginning of the year. So I had gotten this like, I think maybe last year, like during like December or something. I even think some of these early pages are from December, but yeah, I remember like decorating this like very earlier on this year. So it is, it has been somewhat consistent. Um, there are months in here that I haven't really journaled at all, but uh, I did do some recent spreads, which I can show you guys really quick. So these spreads are from my vacation. Um, I took a vacation this summer. I went to the UK. Um, so Ireland, Wales, Scotland, um, and that was the first time I've ever been to Ireland or Scotland or Wales for that matter. I think, um, I feel like I have been to Wales, like, I don't know. Anyway, either way, it was the first time I've been to all these places. Um, Scotland was definitely a dream. I can't wait to go back. I love Scotland so much. Um, so this was in Wales. This is a place that um, I stayed at. at. That was amazing. And um, I got to see like a really cool castle. And yeah, so that was my last entry. So there's a lot of pages. I think that I'm going to let it like go until the end of the year. I don't know how much more consistent I'll be with this planner just or this journal because... Um, I have been using a different planner slash journal as of late, but I do want to just come back in here once in a while and, um, like add like a couple of more entries, but yeah, surprisingly was a really great, uh, use for me. Um, so I don't know. I think next year I... I actually have another one of these notebooks. I bought two, but um, I haven't really used the other one. I don't want to cross over like the years just because then, you know, when I reflect back, it's going to be kind of like 
confusing because it'll be like 2024 stuff 2025 stuff so I don't want to do that but I don't want to waste the pages either so I think whatever pages I don't use I'll just you end up like using it as like scratch paper um I just really hate wasting the paper in the planners and journals um and that is another reason why I want to stay within a couple of systems like three max like I said because I just feel like the wasting of the paper makes me feel worse mentally um and and yeah so that is kind of the idea with the moleskin i i definitely think it was a great experiment for this year again i don't know that i would go back into it next year because i already have some plans for next year's pl uh, journals but i do have a, a moleskin notebook another one um so maybe i'll just use it as like um an artistic or like creative book <laughs> but the truth is that like the way that I decorated in this notebook was not really that much more different like than how I decorated in the Hobonichis and stuff. So initially I thought I would just make this kind of like a junk journal type of notebook but I don't think that style works for me that well. So it ended up just being like how I would decorate normally. <laughs> so yeah if I felt like I was like repeating certain things from this notebook to the current journals that I've been using but it is it is a little freeing to know that it's not like a super expensive journal and um that I didn't have to feel precious about the pages sometimes I do think with like if you feel like you can't write in a journal because you feel like the journal's so expensive and it's precious to you and stuff it, you might benefit from just getting like a plain old regular notebook and then decorating it um I have done that in the past as well. I usually, I literally used a mead, like a mead um, composition book in the past and that worked out actually really great. So that is an option if you feel like you don't want to be too precious about notebooks. You definitely want to write in it right at the end of the day. So you shouldn't feel too precious about it. And um, I, I will say sometimes I feel that way with like the Hobonichi notebooks. But I do think that um, I am a little bit more, like a little bit, more of a minimalist now and um I don't really feel like decorating my pages as much as I used to I feel like there's a lot more things on my mind that I want to write about and that's kind of why I went into this this new planner and I'll get into that in a second but yeah so that is the Moleskine expanded update and before I get into my current system, I do want to share an update of my archiving Hobonichi cousin, my archiving journal. This is the one that I've talked about the most on my channel. I really, really loved how I did this system and I am very excited to keep using this as an archiving journal. So I recently did an update video, I think like a month ago on, um, basically just like an update of how I've been um, utilizing this journal and just showing you guys like a flip through. So not much has changed since that video. So I'm not going to go through another flip through, but I just want to say that I feel like this has been my most consistent in terms of like media or archiving or commonplace journaling. Um, so I think that I will definitely be using this like continuing on into 2025 my goal with this journal is to just fill all the pages because it's an archiving journal not necessarily like tied to the year specifically like i bought this in april so i would say it's not specifically tied to like just 2024 um it is truly like an archiving journal like i'm just talking about everything in terms of music in terms of TV shows and nostalgia, just things that I really love. So I wanna be able to go back and just look at these notebooks like as volumes instead of the year, if that makes sense. So this is volume one and then next year or whatever, however long it takes for me to finish this and go into the next notebook would be volume two. So that's another option. I think for those of you guys who feel like so time limited, um, if you want to utilize like a commonplace or a archiving journal, 
you don't necessarily have to bind that journal to a year you can keep using it like uh, until it's filled up and that is the idea with this um notebook is that i'm gonna use it till it's filled up i'm not like journaling in this every single month i know i should but <laughs> i don't do it every single month it's just whenever i feel like a topic of interest pops up sometimes it's really random like i am very adhd so i am thinking like about a million things all the time and nothing really truly sticks but once in a while I'll come across something and it really sticks in my mind and then I go into a rabbit hole about it and those are the type of things that I want to like document in here so that I can look back at it and it just really brings a smile to my face like I pretty much live and breathe my 90s Y2K nostalgia stuff so that is what these notebooks are going to be for. Um, so this will just be a volume one and my goal though is to finish this book by like at least like early next year though like February or something like that and the reason that I'm setting such a like long-term goal is because I have a lot of pages to fill like a lot of pages I, I'm I think like more than six months of pages to fill it took me a couple of months just to fill the like first month <laughs> like the first 30 pages um so I'm just being realistic with myself I'm giving myself some grace um and again just being realistic knowing that this is not like um it is not like something that i need to like speed through like it's something more that i want to take my time on and really flush it out and really just have fun with it so that is kind of the idea with this archiving notebook and if you want to know more about it um if you haven't seen any of the other videos i do have a video like explaining the whole like system so you can go check that out if you want and yeah so i definitely have a lot to update with this one i had a recent i updated it recently and i wanted to show you guys this page for a split second because I just feel like it's necessary. Okay. So this is the last spread that I put into here. This is the Sabrina Carpenter spread. And here's the thing. I am a grown mid 30 year old woman and I am not like one of those people who like ever goes crazy about a celebrity. I don't know Sabrina as a person. <laughs> But um, I'm pretty obsessed with her music. I just think that this album is so good. Her new album, I think it's her debut. No, it's not her debut album, but it's like her new album, Short and Sweet. There is not a single song on this album that I didn't like. Like, I liked every single song. And I'm very picky with, like, most albums. Like, I'll skip through most of them. And I like some of them. And I, I felt like that towards... Um, brat as well like charlie's album but this one even more so like there's some albums on brat that i don't mind skipping just because there's other songs on there that i like a lot more this one i really like listening to the whole thing it's just such a fun girly pop little album and i honestly haven't felt that way about a pop album in a long time so like it's it was just so good i mean I could go on and on and about on about it but yeah i just really love her music i think it's really fun and honestly i feel like i haven't felt this way about pop albums since like oh my gosh i really don't know like christina aguilera's debut album <laughs> like really i'm that picky and um very very nostalgic so most pop that i listen to is like from like the 2000s or the 90s um and i mostly like the genre that i listen to i mean i listen to a lot of different genres but it's mostly r&b i listen to mostly r&b and hip-hop so when it when i find like a pop album that i really really enjoy i just like i don't know i i was i was like very floored this is definitely um my favorite song from the album don't smile it's actually the last song from my album it's kind of like a breakup song and it's a little sad but it is just like super underrated in my opinion it's just such a like great vibe like there's such a like 
nice vibe to the song. I don't know how to explain it. But just been really loving it. So this was the last, <laughs> this was the last spread that I have archived in this journal. Um, but yeah, so, but anyway, so that's my archiving journal. We're still going strong, still going strong, not losing the faith. I keep hearing people on YouTube, like on planner and journal tube. I keep hearing people say that like they have tried different notebooks and are going but they always come back to Hobonichi Cousin. Like they, it's just like the, the comfort notebook. And I I get it now. Like I totally understand now because I definitely come back to this archiving journal as my comfort notebook. Granted, the subject matter in this journal isn't like daily life stuff, which here's the thing about daily life stuff. It can get depressing sometimes, you know? Our everyday life is not highlight you know like it like my everyday life is not full of highlights the highlight reels are very far and few but I, I can't just journal about highlights right because that would be like I don't know six pages <laughs> so the thing is I think having a journal like this especially if you're somebody who does deal with a lot of like issues or or like mental health problems like whatever it is that's kind of an ailment to your life it is nice to journal and have like that therapy in a notebook, but sometimes it can get depressing to just talk about like all the things that like trouble us all the time. So I think having a notebook, having a notebook like this where it's more like everything is just positive, everything is just happy, it just makes me feel good to journal in this. So that's my stance on it and I definitely just recommend having that kind of like happy journal if you feel like your primary like notebook is just jotting down your thoughts and sometimes those thoughts can get dark i definitely recommend a happy journal like a play it doesn't have to be archiving it doesn't have to be nostalgia but just like maybe just writing about things that only make you happy or bring joy or like about your hobbies maybe that would be like a good journal to get into um if you're kind of struggling with like too many negative thoughts all the time in your daily life but yeah so this has been working great for me and then we are going to talk about my current like everyday type of planner system so i got this one recently i got this in july this is the common planner from sterling inc and in the A5 and this is actually the part two so it is thinner it is just for July from July to December I realized I didn't really have a planner system I had a lot of journals for like notebooks for journaling but not really like a planner anymore so I wanted to try this out I'm definitely somebody that needs space to write things out in their planner so I wanted to get back or I wanted to stay in an A5. I like the Hobonichi one so much. So um, I just wanted to try this out. I really the reason I went with the Sterling Ink one and not a Hobonichi is just because I wanted to try it out. I know that Sterling Ink is a smaller company and if I can like support like a smaller biz like I would rather do that. Um, everyone and every like anyone and everyone who knows like planners and journals knows Hobonichi. You know they're like the big dogs. So that's just the only reason I tried out Sterling Inc. I didn't really know anything about them or her. Um, anything about the the planners, but then I started seeing videos and a lot of them are similar to Hobonichi and uses the same type of like paper. So I wanted to give it a shot. And I will say the cover is pretty thin without any kind of like cover thing on there. Like I did add the clear cover on here, but it's very, very malleable and like very, very bendy, um, which is could be a good or bad thing. For me, I'm neutral about it, but just something to point out because I know the Hobonichi covers are a little bit thicker. And so this one, I have been utilizing similarly to like the Hobonichi, basically just using this weekly spread to jot down all of my planner notes, like my um, meetings and, you know, due dates and appointments and whatnot. And that's how I've been utilizing 
the weekly space. So the other reason that I went with this is because the daily, unlike the Hobonichi Cousin, the daily pages are undated. And I really, really like that because now it gives me a choice to write in these pages and treat it more like blank pages for any kind of notebook jotting instead of feeling pressured to like fill a whole page every single day, which I think is not super realistic for me. Personally, this this works better for me as a planner, like as a planner to a reminder of dates and whatnot and all the important stuff. And then I just utilize the, um, I just utilize these pages as like blank pages to use as a diary, like a daily journal. So since I use the Hobonichi Cousin A5 as my archiving journal, um, like more spe special interest, since I was kind of moving away from the Moleskine Expanded as like a daily journal. So that's kind of what I've been doing here. And I just really feel like this works for me. I want to, like I said, I want to, uh, care less about being decorative or being too aesthetic with this planner I really want to just use it as like a daily drive like a like a daily thoughts journal um I do have some decorated pages in here just because this was still from when I was on my trip so I do have some pages that are decorative but um again this is just because I was like on vacation and I had like a lot more to um journal about but for the most part like my spreads will probably look more similar to something like this where I really have a lot of thoughts and I want to be able to jot them out and yeah so this is a little preview of what I had planned for 2025 this is um a Hobonichi A6 um Hobonichi Cousin A6 and that will be my daily driver going into next year because like I said this is just a half year planner and I wanted to try it out, um, but yeah. So that one's probably gonna be my daily planner. I just think, I was thinking about it and I was like, I think the A6 makes more sense. I do like this planner and I'm glad I was able to try it out. But I do think the pages are a little bit too big for a daily driver, so um, A6 has worked for me in the past, so I'm just gonna go back to it and yeah. So not much to really say about the planner itself. If you are a Hobonichi Cousin fan, I think the common planner is a like more budget friendly and you would rather support a small business then I would go for this um, over the Hobonichi Cousin but layout and stuff is like kind of the same. I would say the um, the one thing that I actually do prefer with this common planner by Sterling Inc over the Hobonichi Cousin is that I like the font better like I like the fonts here better. Um, it's more minimal. It's a little bit more clean and aesthetic to me. I don't really love all the like red like lettering um, in the Hobonichi Cousins or like the they have quotes on the bottom. <laughs> I don't really like that. I, like I want to be able to put my own stuff in there and I kind of wish that they would stop doing that but that's some people like it so it's whatever. But I do prefer like the font and the overall like aesthetic of this the common planner um better than the hobonichi cousin so you know it just really depends on if you like staying in the hobonichi system they definitely have different covers and like different like notebooks um and different like releases so it just depends on if you want to stick with them and if you're brand loyal that's fine but for me i just wanted to experiment a little bit and like even like here like the font I just like the font a lot better it's just a lot more cleaner and there's no like random red um font text or whatever <laughs> like I just don't really like the random red from Hobonichi again some people love it so you know like to each their own but yeah so that's my experiment um I've been really liking it so far like it's pretty nice um, I don't really have anything bad to say about it. The only like negative thing I can think of is that the cover is just so bendy. Like, I mean, you guys like this has a clear cover on it, but still like super, super thin. Um, so it doesn't feel the most like sturdy, but I honestly don't mind it. I think it feels really comfortable 
um, to write on. So yeah, that is the common planner. And this is my current planner planner. <laughs> okay, last but not least, the thing I wanted to share with you guys is kind of random, but this is something that I wanted to do um, for the rest of this year. Uh, I saw these notebooks at Indigo, which is pretty much like Barnes and Nobles, it, like the Canadian version of Barnes and Nobles. But I went into Indigo and they have some really cute notebooks and stuff. And they had this like three pack of these like long like notebooks. And uh, these ones were on sale. And so I just like bought them and I figured I could use them as like scrapbooking notebooks or something. But I thought it'd be really fun instead to use all three of them as like a special interest notebook so that like they're very thin right and there's not that many pages and I like the way that it's like shaped <laughs> I don't know I kind of like the tall like look of these notebooks is kind of unique so I thought it would be fun to like use these as like the special interest notebooks for the remainder of the year and see if I kind of like it it does remind me of a traveler's notebook like a big version of a traveler's notebook like this is pretty big I don't know if you guys can tell but it's pretty tall and long but um I have tried traveler's notebook in the past I don't really like it but this is more of like an individual like standalone notebook and I thought it would be fun to use it as like just for like one month so I don't even know how many pages are in here it might not even be I mean I'm sure this is like 30 pages it's probably like 50 pages right but either way I'm going to use this for just the month of October because October is like what my favorite month of the year it's when all the spookiness happens and I was just thinking about that because I was like you know I want to start documenting the spooky things and all the like fun Halloween-esque like content and put it into my archiving journal and although I will be using my archiving journal to talk about certain like spooky things and like whatever of interest I wanted something more dedicated and that's kind of what I thought I could utilize these notebooks for because it's not very like intimidating since they're so thin and I think it'll be just fun to like look back on these like special interest little notebooks um over the years so this one has my little puffy stickers on there for October and I'm definitely going to just be really creative with it and just have fun with it and and see how it goes my idea was that if this goes well and I can be consistent with it then for November and December I can do the same thing because I love the last three months of the year that's like the most fun times of the year in my opinion um so it could be for like every month but I'm thinking that instead I just will probably do October and December because November is kind of like besides Thanksgiving like I don't know it's just another extension of October <laughs> in my opinion in my head so I'm just gonna stick to one for now I might just like see how it goes and if I really like it then I can use the other two notebooks for next year or I can utilize them for a different type of special interest for next year so hopefully that makes sense but um I will like document this in future vlogs on my channel and yeah I think it'll be really fun I think it's just nice to have a small not intimidating notebook sometimes like of just like few pages just to turn it into like something special you know and and you can like fill out as many pages as you want and you don't have to do it like daily like I plan on just like having a session like one of these weekends and just kind of going ham <laughs> and filling as much as I can I already have so many like spooky Halloween things that I want to put into here and so I'm really just excited about it excited to do it so that is my idea with this little notebook it's just like another experiment it's nothing like that I need to like super commit to I think it's just more of a fun thing to look back on and just a fun activity for me so 
that is it guys that is the mega update on my planning and journaling as for the notebooks i'm going to use in 2025 i think i'm going to wait and talk about that in a different video because this one is already getting too long so i'll talk about that in the next one and it's not really like that interesting in my opinion it's like everything you know like i already showed you guys the sneak peek of next year's planner for one of them and that's the hobonichi cousin a6 like it's a very very popular planner but i do want to talk about some of the other like journaling ideas i have for next year but i'll save it for the next video but anyways thanks so much for watching and i hope everyone has a good rest of the week and i'll see you guys in the next one bye